Aw, shit. Who's to blame for this disaster? Welcome to History Legends and in this video we'll do a step-by-step -step analysis of Operation Market Garden as depicted in Band of Brothers. Since we're now in the Netherlands, make sure to watch parts 1, 2 and 3 that take place in Normandy. Let's see if Band of Brothers properly portrayed Operation Market Garden from a historical accuracy standpoint and realism. And that's what you'll discover in this video. I think Band of Brothers is one of the best depictions of World War II in cinema and since it came out when I was a kid, it has this special place in my heart. If you're new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. Check out my unique veterans book for real first-hand accounts of World War II and multiple other wars. Link in the bio. As you know, I've been working really hard on these historical reactions to war movies, so make sure to join my Patreon to keep the show running. Okay, you see? You have some paratroopers on the side of the tanks. They should all be on the tanks to move faster. Okay, it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. <laughs> of course. Oh my god, and now the Germans are everywhere. As you know, this episode is called Replacements because the 101st Airborne filled up all the casualties from the Normandy campaign with new recruits. Thing is, it was not only riflemen that were replaced, but there were also freshly commissioned officers with no battle experience that had to lead men into battle. So as we can see, he did a terrible mistake by going on his own like that and was shot immediately. I love this scene because it's another example of the advice from a new recruit and a veteran. So the replacements, they don't know what to do, they're a bit scared, so they prefer to stay where they are. At first glance, it might be a good intuition to stay in that ditch. But I believe that the veterans know that the German artillery can zero them fast if they don't keep moving. There's something I point out, you know, in episode one of my series, I talk about grenades and where to store them. I think the paratroopers didn't have the same uniform in Normandy as they had in the Netherlands. If you're a uniforms expert, let me know in the comment section. But what I can notice right away is that now they have much more space for grenades, which I don't think they had when they were in Normandy. Okay, I, I like how they proceed into the town. Oh yeah, they go along the walls. They take cover. Excellent. You know, there's something that triggers me in war movies is when the soldiers simply move along the main road and fully expose themselves and don't even try to take cover. And I'm happy that Ben of Brothers did not fall for this trap. Like here right now, what they do is that you have the main tank calm that wants to go into the village. But then you have the infantry that kind of flanks the road to make sure that there are no enemies by avoiding the main roads and moving through the backyards. Very good. And I even think it could have been very useful for them to have some sort of machine guns positioned somewhere to provide suppressive fire in case they see some Germans. Wow, just beautiful. The way they move, it's... wow. I'm impressed. I think this is one of the only World War II depictions where you have squads actually formed up moving in to a city instead of this free-for-all that we usually get. So I'm pretty impressed. I'm very happy. And what I like here is that the infantry is ahead of the tanks. Not like what we can see in Fury where the, the tank literally goes in first. Because here the role of the paratroopers is to scout the entire area, especially for anti-tank guns and anti-tank weapons. So you have the, the veterans from Normandy leading the, the new replacements. From the backyards. It's pretty good. And they move fast. That's what I like. They move fast from one cover to another. Excellent. Okay, tanks. Okay, we have a problem. As you can see, the tank column is made of both Shermans and Cromwells. 
And this is the root of the debate about this battle. And I have to say, Stephen Ambrose, the man who wrote Band of Brothers, the book, messed up hard for this battle. Almost everything he says about it is wrong. He wrote that Easy Company moved out on September 19th on top of a squadron of Cromwell tanks from the Hussars. The problem is, every word of it is wrong. In reality, Easy Company and 18 tanks of B Squadron from the 44th Royal Tanks Regiment of Sherman's were sent towards Noonan on September 20th. Not even the same day. Now sorting through what actually happened at the Battle of Noonan was a mess because American, British and German sources all contradict themselves. The only man that managed to make sense of it all is a Dutch tour guide called Edwin Popkin, and thanks to him we'll be able to trace back what actually happened. Once the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment took control of the city of Eindhoven, their goal was to expand the defense perimeter of the city. Easy Company and the 2nd Battalion were to march eastwards towards Helmand. This order was halted when the German 107th Panzer Brigade launched an attack towards the very strategic bridge at Zon, which was a prime objective of Operation Market Garden, but it was also the headquarters of the entire 101st Airborne Division. The Allies had to react quickly. Zon was already threatened from the west, but now a new attack came from the south. The Allied command had to secure the bridge at Zon at all costs. Through intensive recon missions, they knew the approximate location of all the German units in the sector. The 506 was called back to Eindhoven, and this set the stage for the Battle of Noonan. Meanwhile, the Allied plan was to flank the Germans along three roads. Easy Company was to pair up with the British units, B Squadron from the 44th Royal Tanks Regiment. Together, they were to push beyond Noonan and trap the 107th Panzer Brigade. However, the Germans expected such a move and heavily defended Noonan. At 6 a.m., the British launched a first recon patrol towards Noonan, which made contact with the Germans, estimated their forces, and quickly came back. At about 9.30 a.m., the battle group of Easy Company and the Shermans from the RTR set forward up the road. The Allies would not benefit from surprise as the Germans knew an attack was coming and had set up their vehicles for a proper ambush. And from the top of the Church of Noonan, they could also see the Allied tank column approach from far away. So this is where we're at now in the episode. Let's keep watching. Oh my god, this doesn't even make sense. This is one of the worst ways you could possibly camouflage a tank. First of all, covering it in hay is not enough. Now, in an ideal situation, you would want the lower part to be protected as well. For example, by a wall. So you only have the turret visible to be as small of a target as possible. Then you wouldn't want the cannon sticking out like that, so the tank should back up a bit. Now a Tiger can easily destroy a Sherman from hundreds of meters away. But the weight's position now takes away 90% of its range advantage, and the tank is kind of stuck in this position. What if the Americans entered the village from another street? The Tiger screwed. Usually the Germans would position their armored vehicles and anti-tank cannons at every possible entrance of the village and engage targets from a distance. So the first group saw it. Now this other squad also sees it. <laughs> it always has to be a tiger. Germans only have tigers. <laughs> this guy would have been a prime target for a sniper. And this makes me wonder, you have a lone German tiger in the village. Where's the German infantry? So they're stopping the tanks, so that's good. So he can't see the tank. Shooting, 
This scene just makes you hate British soldiers. Not only they're arrogant, but they're incompetent as well. But don't forget, Band of Brothers is a story told as perceived by the men of Easy Company, which has a huge pro-American bias. And multiple times throughout the episode, it's made clear that the reason why Market Garden failed is because of the British. But the question I have here is, why don't they just stop the tanks? Why don't they just stop the tanks and bring more troops forward? They could have brought a bazooka team. They could have brought so many men to actually threaten the tiger tank, who's literally alone. Oh boy. And the tanks are very close to each other. Okay, I never understood where the German tank is hidden from this perspective. Ah, oh, shit. Who's to blame for this disaster? Is it the paratroopers? They knew the tank was there. They could have kept moving, bring in some bazookas and fire at the tiger at point blank. And there's not a single German defending the tiger. Or maybe is it the British for not listening to the paratroopers? But why should they listen to newbies with zero knowledge of tank warfare? Paratroopers that were never trained on how to coordinate with armored vehicles. Actually, Easy Company took part in a battle near the town of Vejo that is not mentioned in the series. Fun fact, there the American paratroopers faced their nemesis from Normandy, the 6th Parachute Regiment. Once again, Easy Company was supported by British tanks. Thing is, Easy Company had to push through 350 meters in open field, but they immediately got pinned down by German machine guns and mortars that were in the forest at the end of the field. And in a similar way to this episode, Lieutenant Winters also spotted a German Tiger across the road. So he went to see the two British tanks supporting them and he told them, if you pull up behind the bank on the edge of the woods, you will be in hull defilade and you can get a shot at him. His advice got the two British tanks demolished within seconds. So I'm not sure if listening to paratrooper tank tactics is necessarily the best. Oh, at least it fires twice. At least the German tank crew knows how to put two shells back to back. Not like another movie I don't like to mention. But of course, it completely misses any of the British tanks that are literally in front of him. Now, is it really how the Battle of Noonan happened? In reality, first contact happened near a small hamlet named Obvetten. But all the firing took place at a long range. The Allied battle group kept moving along that main road towards another small hamlet right before noon and proper. And for a while they did not receive any fire as they were covered by the houses along the road. But everything changed once they reached the edge of that hamlet. Beyond that point was an open field. And just like Edwin Popkin says, right. So what that means as the Americans are here coming into the open ground, is that they basically stick their head in a noose. All of a sudden, they were fired upon from all directions. In fact, it was the lead tank of Lieutenant Benton that got destroyed first. The hatch came off flying and the tank transformed into a flaming inferno. The gunner managed to pull himself out last, but he had lost his two legs. Two crew members were killed, Corporal Ralph Studdard, who fought since North Africa, and Trooper Basil Nichols, who joined in August 1944. Immediately after, another Sherman was hit. The men from Easy Company were too far away to properly engage the enemy. They were stuck in between an exchange of fire involving long-range weapons and suffered many casualties. So as of now, the main differences that we have between the real battle and Band of Brothers is that first of all, the Allies knew that the Germans were around Noonan, so it wasn't a complete surprise. And the other thing is that the Germans were actually positioned along the village of Noonan. And the firefight took place at several hundred meters away. There are many reasons why you wouldn't want to place a machine gun there. 
The good thing is that it has a clear view of the entire battlefield. But let's be honest, it only has a couple breaks as protection, not ideal. Then it is completely exposed from both sides. So if the Americans happen to see it from another angle, they would be fully exposed. And if things turn to shit, how can they escape from this position? They're literally stuck on that rooftop. Honestly, placing the machine gun at the location of this tiger right into that haystack would have made much more sense. First of all, they would have been on the ground, so it's better for cover. They would have had a clear field of fire on the infantry moving. And if things go wrong, they can always run away, pick another position being covered by this building. What the hell are the Germans doing? Bunch of NPC mob. What's the point of running after the Americans? They're playing tag or something. Unlike in Band of Brothers, the Germans did not run after the American infantry. Actually, they only fired their tanks, mortars, and machine guns from over 400 meters, since the Germans had properly set up their ambush. With the fire lines properly adjusted, the British tanks and the American paratroopers could not do anything about it, and they quickly escaped from that trap. Oh my god, demolished! So this is a Yacht Panzer, literally tank hunter. Now the only thing that bothers me is that they portray this Yacht Panzer just like any other tank. But you probably noticed that it lacks a turret. So if you move too much, you can't aim properly. It's literally like an anti-tank gun on wheels. And since the armor was concentrated at the front, the ideal combat situation for Yacht Panzer units was in a planned ambush. The skill of the commander of such units lay in correctly choosing and preparing such places long before needed, just like the Germans did during the actual Battle of Nunen. And if you look at this map, you can even see the positions where the Germans had placed their Jagd Panzer. These are known sightings of German anti-tank capability. And what we're talking about is probably these type of Panzer, uh, 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 Jagd Panzer. It looks amazing but the range is too close and it just moves too much for a realistic battle. Okay, we didn't see that machine gun at the beginning of the battle. Oh, it's boom! Bazookas were actually used a lot to demolish buildings and walls. So that's properly portrayed. And check out this part. I'm not sure. The lieutenant is on shore. All throughout the book of Band of Brothers, you see how the men from Easy Company were actually mad and disgusted at the inexperienced officers that were supposed to lead them into battle. Often, not only would these officers be a danger for themselves by getting killed or wounded, but also for the entire unit they were supposed to lead. Many times it is mentioned that the fighting capabilities of the paratroopers in Normandy, the 101st Airborne, with all the new replacements, was not nearly as good as the men who fought on D-Day and in Normandy. Okay, he's protecting the withdrawing Americans. He's firing a couple shots. In the book, it said that Private James Miller died because of a grenade. And this is basically what is portrayed in the episode. But now that we know that the firefight took place from hundreds of meters away, this seems highly unlikely. He most likely got killed from a mortar strike. But it just shows you how everything happened so fast and that the men from Easy Company don't really knew what was going on. Even in the book, the battle is barely mentioned. Private James Miller was actually one of four Americans killed in action that day, with William Miller, Vernon Menze, and Robert Van Klinken, and ten others got wounded. Not only did this push towards Noonan end in a failure, but it was also one of the costliest day for Easy Company altogether. Overall, Easy Company took a beating during Operation Market Garden. It failed to get the bridge at Zun, it failed to get through at Noonan, it failed in the drive to Uden, and it failed in the initial attack on the German salient south of Vejo. So I have the feeling the battle as portrayed in Ben of Brothers is more like 
the compilation of all the battles that Easy Company went through during Operation Market Garden. Easy Company jumped into Holland on September 17th with 154 officers and men. 10 days later, they were down to 132. But Market Garden will not be the end for Easy Company in the Netherlands.